Hey, what's up, YouTube's Meander here. Today I'm doing my full review on the all-new Lenovo Yoga 3 Pro laptop. All right, let's get started. Another year, another yoga, and this is the Lenovo Yoga 3 Pro launched for late 2014. This Yoga 3 Pro features the latest Intel Broadwell processors, as well as an all-new design. With the success of the previous Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro, Lenovo hopes to take the Yoga 3 to another level. Will that be the case? Let's find out. This laptop is one of the first ones to get the Intel Core M5Y70 processor, which is based on the Broadwell architecture. Compared to last year's Yoga 2 Pro, those models had the Intel Core i5-4210 and i7 processor available. Alright, let's jump to the specs now. This laptop features 8GB of DDR3 RAM, a 13.3 inch high definition 10 point multi-touch display with a resolution of 3200 by 1800 a 256GB solid state drive, an Intel HD Graphics 5300, for wireless connectivity, you got a Broadcom 802.11ac with Bluetooth 4.0. This laptop runs Microsoft Windows 8.1, and the retail price is starting at $12.99 US. Let's go ahead and kick off this review by talking about the design and build quality. On top, you got that plastic finish that is very similar to last year's model. Here goes your watch band inspired hinge, which Lenovo claims is crafted from 813 individual pieces of aluminum and steel. And on the bottom, you get that same plastic finish just like on top. Alright, let's go and take a look at the internal of the laptop. There goes that beautiful QHD display. For 2014, you get the all-new soft touch feel right here, surrounding the keyboard and the trackpad, which feels very nice. This laptop weighs 2.6 pounds compared to the previous version, which clocked in at 3.1 pounds. And its thickest point is 0.5 inches compared to last year's Yoga 2 Pro, which was 0.61 inches. With the laptop being so thin and light, let's go and test out the durability of the display and surrounding areas. As you can see here, there's a lot of flex. Wow, that screen flex is bad. However, it's kind of expected for a thin and light laptop like this one. Now I'm going to test out the top panel of the cover. Let me go and press down firmly. With the laptop being closed, the flex is not too bad compared to leaving it open. Now we're going to move on to keyboard flex. Let me go and push down firmly. As you can see here, the weakest point is the middle section. However, the flex is not too bad compared to some other laptops I have tested. With the only watch band hinge, only time will tell how durable it is after years of use. For a thin and light laptop, you get a decent amount of ports here. On the left, you got your AC charging port, USB 3.0 port, micro HDMI port, and an SD card reader. For the right side, you got an additional USB 3.0 port, an audio combo jack, volume up and volume down rocker, orientation lock, Novo button, which can be used to access the recovery system, and your power button with an LED status indicator. The Lenovo Yoga series is a very popular line of laptops because of the multiple modes you can use. Let me go and break down the four modes. The first mode obviously is your laptop mode, followed by your stand mode. Here you can show off your presentations with style. Next up is our tent mode, where you can fold this up in bed and enjoy a movie more comfortable. When you go through these multiple modes, Lenovo will often suggest these most commonly used apps depending on the mode you're in. And last but not least is our tablet mode. Even though this year's Yoga 3 Pro is about half a pound lighter than last year's model, I still find it awkward and cumbersome to use this in tablet mode. One of my biggest complaints is the capacitive home button. Often I find myself hitting it multiple times just to get a response. Hopefully a firmware update will fix this issue, or maybe I just have a bad unit. Let me give you one more demo. See I had to press it two times just to get a response. Now it's responding. The Yoga 3 Pro features a gorgeous 13.3 inch IPS display with a resolution of 3200 by 1800 the colors and text look sharp and vibrant. Last year's Yoga 2 Pro had a fantastic display as well, with the exception of the mustard yellow color reproduction. The Yoga 3 has excellent color reproduction and contrast ratios. Overall, I've been highly impressed. Just look at some of these images I'm scrolling through here. Don't they look breathtaking? Look at that, that looks amazing. Thank you Samsung and Lenovo for giving us a high quality display. For the Adobe sRGB, I got a score of 96%, which is a very high score that just screams quality. And for the Adobe RGB, I got a score of 74%. Again, excellent scores for an excellent panel. This section, I'm going to give you a demo of the text here. Let me go and zoom in. As you can see, the text is very sharp. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the difference. So how does this panel compare to the 15 inch MacBook Pro Retina, which features a 2880 by 1800 panel, compared to the Yoga 3 Pro, which features a 3200 by 1800 panel? In terms of color accuracy and contrast, I would rank these two panels neck and neck. 
with the exception of text scaling, which OS X handles much better than Windows 8. However, Windows 10 should be able to handle those text scaling much better. To avoid having some small text images on some of your applications, I would recommend setting your text at 200%. To test the viewing angles on this 13.3 inch IPS display, we're going to rotate the laptop to the left. As you can see here, it's still very visible, thanks to its IPS technology. The only knock I have on this panel, it is sometimes too reflective compared to the MacBook Pro Retina. Let's go ahead and tilt the display all the way back. Since this is a yoga laptop, it'll go all the way down. And that's at 100% right there. The touchscreen performance on this 13.3 inch 10 point multi-touch display has been very good. As you can see here, it's highly responsive to the touch. Let me go ahead and scroll up and down. So far, very smooth. The multi-touch gestures and overall screen performance has been excellent. Overall, great job Lenovo. The keyboard on the Yoga 3 Pro feels fairly comfortable and easy to type on. However, the key travel is slightly shorter than last year's Yoga 2 Pro. With that being said, this keyboard is pretty good considering how thin and light this Ultrabook is. Let me give you a demo of the key travel. As you can see here, the key travel is adequate. This keyboard is also backlit, but there's only one option, either on or off. I just wish Lenovo had multiple brightness options. The Synaptics trackpad on this laptop has been very precise. Let me go ahead and show you it in action. Two finger scrolling was smooth as butter, but multi-touch gestures were the complete opposite. Often I would find myself readjusting too many times with multi-touch. And occasionally some clicks would not register when I click on them. However, for the most part, this trackpad works good. One of the biggest changes to the Yoga 3 Pro is the processor. This year you get the Intel Core M5Y70, which is based off the Broadwell architecture. Compared to the previous Yoga 2 Pro, those models had the Intel Core i5-4210U or the i7-4510U, which was based off the Haswell architecture. The thermal design power of the new Intel Core M is 4.5 watts, compared to last year's model, which ran at 15 watts. This 5Y70 is clocked at 1.1 GHz, but can turbo boost up to 2.6 GHz. So how's the performance of the new 5Y70? During my tests with normal productivity like word processing, watching 1080p videos, to editing photos on Adobe Photoshop, this computer ran fine. With that being said, I did notice some CPU and GPU throttling on some of the benchmarks that I was running. However, for normal productivity, you won't notice too much of a slowdown compared to last year's Yoga 2 Pro. For better performance, I would recommend waiting for the Yoga 3 Pro with the Intel Core M5Y71, which features the same clock speed of 1.1 GHz, but it can turbo boost up to 2.9 GHz. Next up, let's take a look at some Geekbench 3 results for the Intel Core M5Y70. For the single core score, I got 2,472. And for the multi-core score, I got 4,225. So how does that compare to the Yoga 2 Pro, which had the Intel Core i5-4210U? The single core performance from the i5 is roughly 300 points higher, and the performance from the i5 multi-core score is around 1,000 points higher. So yes, technically the Intel Core M5Y70 is a bit of a downgrade compared to last year's i5 series. One of the main advantages of the all new Intel Core M5Y70 is temperature control. During my test, the maximum temperature I got was around 78 degrees Celsius. Compared to last year's Yoga 2 Pro, those models ran at around 85 to 88 degrees Celsius. So definitely an improvement here. Speaking of temperature control, the external body of the Yoga 3 Pro remained pretty cool with the exception of the bottom right hand corner, which can get pretty warm depending on your usage. And all new for this year is the Intel HD Graphics 5300. Let's see how it performs in some of the benchmarks. For Cinebench R15 OpenGL test, I got a score of 17.75 frames per second. Now let's dive into 3 Mark Advanced Edition. For Skydiver, I got a score of 1,634. For Cloudgate, 3,332. And for Ice Storm Extreme, I got a score of 17,676. Basically, with these kind of scores, many of today's games will not be playable on this laptop. The Yoga 3 Pro features a 256GB M2 SSD that is very fast and responsive. Just look at these speeds on this benchmark. For the sequential read speed, I got 461.9 megabytes a second. And for the sequential write speed, I got 394.9 megabytes a second. With normal productivity, you can expect anywhere from 5 to 6 hours out of a full charge with screen brightness at around 70%. I just wish I was able to get more since these are the latest Broadwell processors. All new for this year is JBL audio speakers. There are two speakers facing in the bottom, and they sound pretty good compared to last year's model, which were mediocre compared to these. And next up we got the internal components of the new Yoga 3 Pro. As you can see, the battery takes almost all the space inside. Let me go and break them down for you. Here goes your 256GB M2 SSD that can be upgraded in the future. 8GB of soldered on RAM. Followed by your Broadcom 802.11ac with Bluetooth 4.0. This wireless card has been performing flawlessly. I have not had any troubles with connections or speed tests. Overall, great performance from this wireless card. 
Wait a minute, isn't the Intel Core M5Y70 Broadwell series supposed to be fanless? Nope, not in this laptop. Lenovo chose to keep a small fan running during high CPU usage to keep the temperatures down. The fan is fairly quiet for the most part, however, during heavy CPU usage, you can hear it running. With an all-new thin and light design, the Yoga 3 offers good performance on the go, however, battery performance could be better. Again, if you want the best performance of the Yoga 3 Pro, I would recommend waiting for the Intel Core M5Y71, which has a turbo boost up to 2.9GHz. The base model starts at $1299 and comes with a 256GB SSD, and you can jump up to the 512GB SSD for $1499 US. You also get three colors to choose from, golden, light silver, and orange. These laptops are available now from Lenovo.com or your local Best Buy. Alright, this completes my full review on the all-new Yoga Pro 3. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button, and please subscribe for more upcoming videos just like this one. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.